Good day, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Kevin and Talia, good to see you. Thanks for flying along today. We are continuing our flight along the historic Route 66 in the United States. This is Leg 3, taking us from Springfield, Illinois, down to St. Louis, Illinois. Now, you may have heard of St. Louis, Missouri, or St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, but the town is actually split, uh, not only by the Mississippi River, but by the Missouri-Illinois state line. So we're flying down to the Illinois portion. Uh, it has the smaller airport where we're going to. The Missouri side has the famous arch and the major airport. We'll take a look at it when we get down there and uh, fly over top. But, uh, yeah, we're going down to the uh, Illinois side today. And we're going to carry on following uh, Route 66 between the two uh, cities and towns, and we'll uh, take a look at what we cross over on the way down. Uh, we are live time, but we are using the Few Clouds preset because, quite frankly, the weather in the Illinois, Missouri area at the moment is pretty miserable with snowstorms and stuff like that. So we want to be able to fly and see things. We'll do live weather when we can, but it was just not doable for today's flight. So let's hop on board and we'll get everything fired up. All right, we are on the aircraft, on the aircraft, in the aircraft. It's clicking away there. All right, so we should be good to go. So we will, first of all, we're gonna get rid of that. We'll turn the uh, the master and batteries on. First screen coming up, I'll turn that off. We will throw the, uh, we'll get the nav lights and beacon lights on. They are up and running. Uh, taxi light not yet we'll turn on the uh, avionics one so get that warmed up system test okay we're good there so primer will come on we're going to advance the uh, mixture to full rich uh, pump can come off and we can start the aircraft throttles cracked clear prop <laughs> wing wall. Hey, I'll tell you, I've, uh, when I was flying air shows back in my flying days for the museum, um, there's a wing walker out of Quebec that we used to see in some of the shows, and she was uh, pretty nuts, incredible, and no way I would actually get up there and do what she would do. All right, we'll turn that off. We're going to go into uh, the PDF. We're going to go wind. Option three, bring it back. We'll go CDI to nav mode. Transponder will be VFR. We'll put it on altitude, and that is set. So we're going to enter in our destination just as a reference point. It is Kilo Charlie Papa Sierra. It's the uh, St. Louis uh, something Springfield Park Airport or something like that. So we are going direct to. Oh, we're gonna need to get uh, you out of the way for a second and it is kilo I'm gonna bring that engine RPM up a little bit let the airplane warm up there you go. kilo Charlie backwards for this one, Papa, and go backwards again, Sierra, there it is, St. Louis downtown, that's the one we want, we'll go enter and activate, and there you can see we are 80 miles away from there, and again it's just going to be a reference point for us, we'll be following the actual route uh, flying by maps. All right, so the winds, uh, because we're on the preset, the winds are out of the west. That means we'll be taking off on runway 31, which is actually just down ahead of us here. So we're pretty warmed up, so we'll uh, put the taxi light on. 
I'm also going to bring up the uh, panel lighting here, get some contrast. Bring up the standby instruments. A little bit on the pedestal as well. That's uh, looking good. So we've got Talia over there in a 172, and Kevin is flying the trusty old Cessna 170 tail dragger. Alright, so brakes are released. Of course, we're flying this uh, 1970s Cessna 172 with glass cockpit would have been a retrofit at some point. But it's got the old paint scheme. Looks like from uh, old flying school somewhere. So we're going to head out here to Bravo and taxi down to the end of runway 31. It's not too far. Did look to see if there was any add-on scenery for here, but uh, there isn't. At least not on flightsim.to. So we'll take off. We'll uh, fly over downtown Springfield again. We'll uh, see the Lincoln Memorial or the Lincoln uh, Presidential Library and the parks around it, and then we'll head off down the. Uh, the mother road. All right, so the glide path is clear. I saw one airplane earlier off in the distance. Not too many around at the moment. We'll just uh, roll straight out and line up on the runway. As we do that, we'll put on our landing lights and our strobe light. Taxi light will come off. And we'll go to first notch of flaps. We're going to be flying at 2,500 feet today get a good view of the ground as we fly along. Uh, so we'll take off and we'll do a right hand turn, fly north on the north side of the airport and across over and then fly down over the center of St. Louis itself. Alright, so we'll just get ourselves up to the 3-1 here to give them room behind. There we go. Hit the brakes. Hello Nick. How are you doing today? All right, so altitude is going to be 2,500. There's Talia coming in. Did you how good this aircraft design is? You know, designed in the 50s, first came out as the 170, the tail wheel, then it went to a, um, I think 1958, it went to the nose wheel configuration. Uh, and it's still in use today as a flight training aircraft. It's such a stable uh, airplane, and I've got a lot of time in these things. They're as easy to fly as any airplane is easy to fly, which can be complicated at times, but it's not too bad. Not too bad, Nick. Not too bad. Doing, uh, doing well and ready to go flying. You know, even after yesterday's uh, eight-hour flight down to St. Martin, we are good to go. So, mixtures fully forward. Lights are set. Oop, I don't know where my nav lights are on. Nav lights are on. We'll get the uh, taxi lights off. We don't need them at the moment. Flaps are set. To the first notch and we are ready to go. Brakes are released and power coming up. Of 
course on the Cessna 172 it's full power right to the stop and then once we're in the climb we pull back to 2450 or so which is the top of the green line holding it on the center line yeah it's still being built it's still come out with them today of course the glass cockpit and everything is the new modern version haven't flown a glass cockpit 172 in real life all my stuff was all steam gauges but even with that you know you could fly anywhere all right we're up we're bringing the power back to say well let's go to 2500 Climb out. And there's the airport there. Of course, the airport's no located to the north of the town, so we're going to uh, carry on this way. We'll uh, put on the autopilot, we'll put on heading mode, and we're going to go into vertical speed mode, and we're going to go up to about a 500 foot per minute climb. 400 feet above the ground has been passed, so we can bring up the flaps. Let the speed come up, that's fine. Now I'll go into uh, heading mode, so we're going to uh, swing around to the north now. And we'll, surf, we'll cross north of the field and then down over the town. Not sure if we were on live weather, it would show everything uh, snow covered. Uh, where it should be but again middle of a snowstorm right now so not exactly VFR flying conditions all right turn zero nine zero thousand to go this is not the first Springfield we're going to uh, Springfield is a popular name this Springfield is named after the Spring River, which uh, flows, I think that's it on the uh, on the map here. Um, so it was named after that, and of course the river comes down this way and it comes through there, and so it was named after the river in the fields where the original town was settled in the early 1800s. And it's uh, Lake Springfield we'll be uh, flying by as we depart to the south. Uh, southwards now, fly over the town. I'll bring the power back to about 2300 once we're in cruise, so that gives you guys some a uh, little bit of play to maintain formation, as it were. Bring the power back to 2300 now that we're coming up for what will be our cruising altitude for this leg. There we go. There's the airport, and there's the town of Springfield. When we came in, we came down this side. There's the water treatment plant, there's the Springfield fairgrounds. good so there's an interesting thing about when you look around the world you're finding place names with the same place that you're from um, and I've always heard of there being a Toronto in Illinois and uh, we're actually gonna pass it so that's uh, pretty cool 
now I know where it is. School down there with the baseball diamonds. That's the cemetery, Oak Ridge Cemetery. So here's the downtown core. Once again, we're going to see those uh, buildings we saw. This is the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. There's a, a park here, a parking lot. This is kind of the downtown area. This is the old state capitol building. Let's fly over top of the town. train station and freight yard. Downtown residential area coming up. That's Lake Springfield. Over here. And uh, down here, where the interstate leaves, is the little town on the outskirts of Springfield called Toronto, Toronto, Illinois. I'm going to fly right over top of that. Picking up again, Interstate 55, which is now where uh, Route 66 used to be. Kind of laid the highway in over top of the uh, existing road at this point. We've seen it split off before, and it does split off into little towns where the bypass goes around. Uh, Toronto down here. Now we're going to start following down again, a little community of Cotton Hill here on the other side of the water. back out into farm country. Looks like Toronto's a little bedroom community. But even there, you know, right outside we got farmers fields. Nice little harbor on the lake. State again as we head further south. I think for a while we're going to have some pretty flat uh, sight lines to the horizon. There's not a lot out there.
big uh, mass there. It must be a radio station there. Actually, that's the uh, Illinois State Police Academy. Right there, the building with the antenna. Getting what mouse is controlling what screen here. The Double J Campground. And a little private uh, private airstrip right there. Community of Glen Arm. I'm still following the Interstate 55. If you're looking for uh, some antique furniture, you can always go to Hilda's Antique Mall. It's open till 5 p.m. I feel like I'm doing like a travel log here. The uh, towers, masts, and smokestacks, and that are courtesy of a mod from flightsim.to. Pretty cool. So, the town coming up here is Diveron. Standard little small town. Just off the interstate high school and all that stuff there but probably servicing all the farm farmlands homesteads farming community <laughs> get your 170 reupholstered yeah you can I mean it's you can uh, pretty much as long as you don't you know slam into something and have uh, crash detection on you can uh, pretty much land wherever you want I'm not sure if it's Diveron or Diveron. There's the high school. And then we're back out over the country, heading towards that endless horizon here with uh, no terrain features in sight.
or antennas. Yeah, no, that's true. I've never landed in a field. The, the closest I got was when I was doing my training and we were doing engine out procedures. And uh, I didn't know. My instructor had... It was the second or third time we'd done it. My instructor had called somebody who owned a private airfield and he got permission for us to land there. And uh, so we were doing it and uh, he, uh, he reached over and uh, pulled the power on me. So you go through the steps. And I said, uh, you know, he goes, where are you landing? And I said, okay, well, there's a, a field down there, so I'm gonna use that. He said, okay. So I did the whole thing, glided down, lined up for it. And uh, I, I started reaching for the throttle to add power again, because in training, you don't actually turn the engine off. And uh, he slapped my hand away, I said, no. So we got closer and closer and I kept looking at him and he says, I'm not going to tell you to pull around. So we actually ended up doing a power off glide into the grass strip, which was pretty cool. Nice to know I could make it if I wanted to and put it down where I, I intended. So we're coming up to Farmersville. You can see it there in the middle distance. Big interstate change here. Getting off to uh, kind of a major east-west road that runs through here. If you're low on fuel, you can go to Jack Flash. He's got gas. He's located just in this area here. Yeah, we did that. We do power failure ones in the in the circuit, um, but once we're out doing cross countries, I mean, there's always that thing you're looking for the where you're going to put down if something happens. It's a consistent checking. Um, when you're flying, so this is it Farmersville? And again, we're still heading due south. I don't want to. Whenever we fly one of the museum airplanes, we go up and do an in, and do a full power back and. and put her into uh, glide speed um, and I tell you those World War One fighters with all the drag on them they come down like a brick so basically if we were flying those and we had an engine failure you were kind of going down landing whatever you were over top of um, not much choice in the matter there given the gear hanging out and multiple wings and all the, the wing bracing cables and all that stuff. Not very aerodynamic. Oh, wrong mouse again. So this is Wagner. And not Wagner, W-A-G, but uh, W-A-G-G-O-N-E-R. Not much there, just a little community off the interstate. And then we got coming up here. You can see the... Uh, Two little like, bypass areas to get in the middle distance. Yeah, rope breaks. Did they actually release you for those? We used to do that um, when I was towing gliders. 
uh, the instructor might tell us to dump them at uh, you know a thousand feet up or something like that oh Kevin that's horrible you flew eight hours yesterday no problem and you're gonna crash the desktop you know half an hour in today um, but yeah I remember uh, once we we're you know we get to a thousand feet and we just reach up and dump the rope so that it's on the glider Most of the time, though, the instructor would dump it from the cockpit of the air of the glider. This is the rest area. This is the uh, what is it called? Coal field rest. This is the southbound and northbound stopping area. There you can see where all the trucks would park. Nice, nice little uh, rest area. We need more of these up in Ontario. Don't need a gas station. Just need somewhere to be able to pull off, walk around. Alright, well, I look forward to uh, dropping in on us. I'm assuming you're going to do a mid-air drop and start. So this is an odd one. This is uh, the little uh, community of Zanesville, but it looks like it's just a couple places over here. Huge interstate interchange here, though. I am uh, running full mix here. I'm not too. It's only about an hour's flight, so I'm not worried about fuel burn at this point in time. Yeah, I'm. T I'm well. Yeah, I'm thinking more along the, the 400 series highways uh, would be nice. Kind of a shopping area here. What do we got here? Lighthouse Antique Mall. We got Nana's Hidden Attic. Midway Trailer Sales. Sales is over here. That's the Hidden Attic. Up here is uh, the Lighthouse Antique. There's a Shell Station right there. And Pioneer Hybrid International, whatever they are. Yeah, 402 is a pretty barren stretch to go along. Same with the 417. I don't think there's much on the 417 once you head up towards Ottawa from it. It's one thing I do like about the States, that they have a lot of nice places just to pull over and rest. Especially if you're traveling with animals or kids or something. <laughs> They're kind of the same. You can get them out, run them around, tire them out for a little bit. There's good news about them dropping the uh, um, the toll on the 412, and there's another one they're going to drop it on on those toll roads, which is nice. And by dropping, it's not a reduction in price; it's like they're dropping it completely. All right, the interstate makes a turn here. We're going to follow it along. We're coming up to the town of Litchfield. And uh, we're actually going to leave the interstate here. So the route came down. You can see the railroad tracks running alongside there. The route came down this way. And turned into the town. Now 
we're going to follow that shortly. See an airport coming up, uh, just left of the interstate. That's Litchfield Municipal Airport. I know when I when I drive down through, I uh, can't remember which highway it is. When I head down through uh, Pennsylvania, I cross the border into New York and I go directly south and into Pennsylvania. There's some nice stops along that route. It's the way I go if I'm uh, riding down into the into the states. All right, so we're coming up for Litchfield. And uh, so, Walmart Super Center, right there. There's the airport. Now we're going to turn off here, and we're going to cut in, and we're going to pick up this road here. And this is the old Route 66. So it used to come down here into the town and then down and it follows this road out along here so we're going to make the uh, turn now and we'll swing to the east of the airport Ottawa to Philly through Syracuse well you can get some good hills if you get into the uh, Alleghenies and stuff um, I've done some riding down through the Catskills and, and you know Upper State New York stuff. It's very nice, uh, much better than uh, just sitting on the slab. And I mean, if you got to do it to, to put miles behind you, I mean the interstates are, are excellent for that. But God, they're boring. All right, so we're following the secondary road here. down past the airport. Oh, it looks like that runway's closed. Is the other one open? Yeah, the other runway's open. Oh, it's just the south, uh, the north approach is closed. Looks like the south approach is still open. Yeah, I haven't been down in New England that much. I've been through, uh, I did a, a bike trip with some friends. Well, we went a couple times down to Lake George in New York. And then we crossed the border. We did some riding in Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, which was really, really cool. Very scenic. Uh, but I haven't been into uh, Maine or Connecticut or Rhode Island or those places. Not yet, anyway. I'm gonna have to keep my reference material. Uh, oh, we got company. Hello, Wayne. Good to see you there. I don't know why you've uh, flanked out. I was seeing your aircraft for a second there. Good to see you. So we're coming up to the town of Mount Olive. There it is there. We're going to kind of jog around. We'll take a look at it. I hear that engine getting closer. There he is. So waiting for Kevin to get back in. I think he went for a ramming attack there. I mean, I know Americans are used to seeing, like, the, the B-Series bombers and P-51s and stuff fly around. I think spit would be a rarity for them. All right, 
right, so here's Mount Olive. The route actually uh, kind of, you can see the road. It comes around and then it uh, cuts down here to the town again. So this is the old Route 66. Comes around this way around the town. Oh, delays, okay. So this is the, uh, and I'm not sure what exactly it is, but this is the Mother Jones Monument. It's a statue of some sort. I'm not sure who Mother Jones was. But here we have Mount Olive. So this is the uh, Route 66 arcs along. And it comes down here. And uh, we're going to cross over I-55 to the other side here. We're heading to the town of Staunton. Uh, I tell you, you like the place that's coming up. And I'm not referring to the Super 8 uh, hotel, motel. Oh, looks like Wayne's got his flaps down to keep up. I'm not making it easy for him. But we have uh, here the town of Staunton. And we're going to kind of go right over it. Is uh, a place called Henry's Rabbit Hut. Rabbit Ranch. It's a tourist attraction, currently closed, but I do not know what they sell there. But it uh, looks to be located, I'm just checking the roads here, somewhere around here. Yeah, Super 8 was a movie, yeah. It's also a very cheap motel chain. Alright, so we're going to uh, fly down this way. As the uh, route takes us southwards. This is the little town of Williamson. And at Williamson, they have a place called, I'm looking for the lake. Is that it there? Am I, yeah, no. Oh, there it is. Is that a lake? Maybe. Yeah. This is a little lake. There's a place called the winery at Shale Lake. That's okay, that's in fact, there it is right there. This is the little town of Williamson. That's Wayne showing off. And down here we have another Livingston. And here we also have another antique mall called the Pink Elephant. And 
pink elephant is located somewhere in here. That's one of these buildings here. Probably that one, I would think. Anyway, we come back out this way. We pick up uh, the I-55 again. And uh, we're going to be following it once more. A lot of antique places around here. So a little town called Warden over there. But here we have the, the Chirping Frog Antique Mall, which is located in this area right here. So we can get a little better view right there. And then we've got Hamel Seed and Farm Supply. Hello, Hamel. If you're looking for a place to hold your wedding, over here we have KT Stables Wedding and Event Venue. These are good places you should be paying me for all this free advertising. Drunk to find, oh there's a old drunk reference, the pink elephant, yeah. Ah, oh, wrong mouse. So we're going to uh, veer to the left here at this fork, stay with the interstate, but this is the town of uh, Hamel. Got a big truck stop coming up right up here. Love's Truck Stop, well-known U.S. chain for uh, truckers refueling and uh, resting and everything. And then up ahead here you can see another one of these north-south uh, rest areas. How's your loading going, Kevin? And then we're out in the country for a little bit. Uh, not a lot to see, except a lot of farms. Oh, Kevin's back. Uh, each night would have more pints. Do you remember the one where you had to uh, serve beers? I can't remember the name of it, but you had to, and you would like slide them down the bar. I think it was a Commodore 64 game. God, you wouldn't uh, be able to market that for kids these days. can't remember if you had to grab the beers or if you were serving them, but I see, I just remember them sliding along and then crashing off of the the uh, the bar at the end. That is uh, Oak Brook Golf Club. Tapper, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Arcade game initially, right? Now oh, we got a big uh, CB starting down there. 
Right. Again, can't see marketing those games to kids these days. <clears throat> so I can see water over there that may be the Mississippi River. That's what kind of uh, separate, I don't see an airport right there. That's what separates uh, St. Louis in half. So we're actually getting close. And we'll do a, we'll fly over St. Louis, go see some landmarks. I'm sure the boys and the fighters will want to fly through the arch. Easy, he'll be over at uh, St. Louis International Airport, which is on the Missouri side. So that's the town of Edwardsville, off in the distance there. St. Louis is appearing on the horizon. Oh, I know. It's uh, morals and stuff are funny the way they shift from country to country and region to region. So, we're coming up to this big interchange here. This is the I-70 coming in east and west. Runs this way. And this is all St. Louis, all over here. You can see the river. So we're kind of coming in from the northeast. The airport is on this, our airport is on this side of the river. So this is where the I-55 and the I-70 combine and they head into St. Louis itself. Don't tell Wayne, oh, we're going to be turning a little bit to the right here at the turn in the interstate. Uh, and she, well, it's a whole thing, right? It's always the the forbidden thing you're going to do more. In a lot of the states, the drinking age is 21, so the college kids being 18, 19, it's all it's forbidden, so they're going to be doing it more, right? Whereas when it's, you know, yeah, it's legal, nobody cares. If the kind of allure rubs off on it, I guess, that's how you could put it. Alright, so off to our left here is the, 
I guess the suburb of Collins Hill. Oh, here's something pretty cool coming up. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Watch the way the road goes very carefully to see if it actually shows up here on the in the sim. I would say this is a definite point of interest. Alright, so we got the straight bit here. See roughly where it should be. So I'm going to fly over there. Oh, start to see the downtown St. Louis area from here. We're still on the old uh, Route 66. Or, yeah. Following it along. get the angle right. So what we're looking for is should be right about there. And according to Google Maps, what we have right about there is the world's largest ketchup bottle. Sure, where it would be. It says it's somewhere around, somewhere here. We're flying over it right now. You think they would have made that a uh, point of interest? Anyway, the Route 66 winds around uh, St. Louis here and uh, heads up to a, a state park up on the northeast. We're not going to go up there, but what we are going to do is we're now going to make the uh, just looking where we are. We're going to make a turn. start flying off in this direction. Airport's somewhere down over there. But that might be it over there. But we're going to kind of head towards downtown get a look at uh, St. Louis itself. Not sure where the arch is located. Actually, we're kind of heading directly towards the airport at the moment. But we'll fly to our airport and we'll overfly and then uh, come up through downtown St. Louis on the Missouri side. Maybe a uh, flying RV here is at the airport we're going to. In fact, I think he is, given where he is located and where the other the other airport's almost right off our right wing, uh, off in that direction. So he could be there, or he could be 100 miles away in a different place entirely.
bunch of parks around here. We can see a lot of greenery on this side. Of course, this is the Illinois area. See some bridges leading over to the other side of the river. I'm assuming the arch is downtown. Never seen it in person. Oh, it's a what that is. Looks like some sort of... It's a big open area on Google Maps. Yeah, I can see the way his uh, tag is moving. He's on that airfield down there. It says he's an A350, which means he should be showing up probably as a 380. There's the airport, we should have the rail yards over here. Yeah, it looks like a big clay place, not sure what they're doing there. But there's the airport we're going into. When we come back, and yeah, there's the rail yard, there's a little sub yard over there, and then there's this big open field area. Here we have a oh, there, America's Auto Auction is this place. That's why all the cars are there. I guess that's the auction building there. And the rail yard looks like this is where they would. Uh, load and unload cars onto those uh, uh, trains, the auto, uh, auto racks. Oh, there he is, down on the ramp. Oh, not a A350, it's a B350, it's a King Air. But this is the airport we're going to when we come back. Oh, there's the arch, you see it now. So we'll head towards the river. It's the mighty Mississippi. Ooh, that could be an interesting general aviation trip. Fly the Mississippi from top to bottom. I wonder if you could do it in float planes all the way. That would be interesting. Anyway, we'll go and uh, take a look at Seattle. Now, the airport elevation here is 590 feet. So if we go to 1,500 feet, that'll put us 1,000 up. So let's uh, go to 1,500 feet. Get a nice view of St. Louis. Again, the towers and antennas and smoke off the factories is being provided by that mod off of uh, Sim, uh, flightsim.to. Yeah, they do. I don't know if we could do it all the way because of the way the river is, but it might be interesting to plot out a course down it anyway and uh, like maybe bush plane fly it. Be like Super Cubs or Kodiaks or something. We're still descending down to fifteen hundred feet. 
So here's the Mississippi, and that's the Missouri side of the river. right up along the shoreline. Looks like a uh, oil fuel processing place here, a fuel terminal. Now I know you, they used to send steamboats from New Orleans all the way up to St. Louis back in the uh, 18, what would it have been, 1840s? When they were settling the west, this was kind of like the jumping off point. A lot of people heading from here, they would head westwards in the uh, wagon caravans. Rail yards below us. Yeah, the arch does. Bridge, not so much. Bridge is pooched. I'm waiting for one of the, the Spitfire or the Measure Schmidt to... Uh, zoom ahead and go fly through it. Another rail yard there. And again, the border is right along the, uh, the river here. There goes uh, Kevin. Is he going to go through it? No, he didn't go through it. Yeah, these bridges are definitely pooched. Not flying through those. But yeah, the arch, however. Should be eminently doable. Well, there's uh, Wayne right on formation. We'll do the arch. We'll come back over, fly over the city, and come down through the arch. I wonder if that's uh, the hockey arena. Try to see if I can find I don't see anything that clearly points out where uh, you know the where the St. Louis Cardinals would play or or anything. Well, there's St. Louis. Alright. So let's go fly through the arch. I'm going to uh, pick up the power a little bit here. Move to about 2450. Maintain that 1500 for now. Let's kind of do a gentle curve over the city. Fly down over the buildings here. And we'll do the arch.
welcome to downtown uh, St. Louis. Right over the uh, the main building there, past the Hyatt. And there we go. Very nice. Take it that's the city hall there. Uh, we just uh, flew over. All right, back to the airport we go. We're going to be landing to the west. So we'll basically take this as our downwind. So our airport elevation is 400 feet. So we want about 14-ish for our circuit. There's my mouse, there we are. So we'll just keep her north of the uh, town here. Usually it's left-hand circuits, but we'll do a, a right-hander. bit here. So 300 is the heading, actually 302. So we'll get that in, we'll get ourselves nicely uh, squared up here. Our reference point. Everything is looking good. So we're past the halfway point of the airfield, so we'll start bringing the power back. About 1500 RPM. The arch is an office block for you. Saying you can't fly through it. Trim it for 65 knots. We're into the white, so first notch of flaps going in. Cranking that trim wheel. Getting that power all the way back. And we'll start our descent. Starting to bring the 302 onto the mark there. That'll put us at a 90 degree base leg. A little bit more trim. Second notch of flaps going in. Power right back. Oh, that's horrible. I guess that ended your flight. Alright, so landing lights are on, mixture's full rich, there's St. Louis in the distance, a little bit slow, plane's a little bit noisy, not sure why we're hearing that clunking noise, a little bit down, trim, keep the speed up. A little bit of power to flatten the descent rate. 600 feet to go. There's Talia down. We'll make our turn. Five hundred. Five hundred feet to go on the ba on the base. The final turn is exactly where we want to be. There goes the spit in the 109.
determined to keep the uh, 65 knots. Nice formation landing, you two. All right, we're under 100 feet, so we're looking down the runway now. You can see the slight rise in it. We're looking there for our level. We get the flare. So ease the power, pulling back, main wheels down. And nose wheel. Well, welcome to St. Louis, Illinois. We'll get off here and join Talia. up here. Ty is going to lead the way to parking. Just head somewhere over there to the east ramp. Yeah, we're very aware that King era should be good. And there we go. That is uh, leg three of our Route 66 trip done. Again, I would have liked to have run live weather, but unfortunately it is pretty miserable in the Midwest right now. So we're doing a few clouds preset instead, which is giving us some nice weather to see the sights, which is kind of what this trip is all about. So the King Air is uh, moving around on the ramp there. We're just going to head up here to Alpha Ford and over to the East Ramp, and we should be good there. So if you're watching and you want to join in, you can come to our Discord. I'll put it up once again into the chat. All the information about all our flights are located there. All the live streams are community flights. If you want to join in, you're more than welcome. Some of them are multiplayer, some of them are VATSIM. And uh, on the Discord, you'll find the times and, and settings and the aircraft for all of the series we do. We fly five times a week currently. So there are lots of options uh, there for whatever you want to do. We'll go. Uh, we'll go around him. Give him room to go. Since we're coming in here like a gang. According to the charts, there's buildings supposed to be here, but that's fine. We're just going to come over here and park up, and then we will be done. Alright, we'll get her parked up. So we're good here, so we'll put the... Uh, Taxi lights are off, strobe lights are off, nav lights are off. Power is pulled, throttles all the way back. Beacon light is off. Ignition's off, avionics and master are off. And here we are. Let me uh, swing the camera around, we'll get a nice shot here.
All right. Well, guys, thank you very much for flying. Our next live stream is on Friday. It is a continuation of the um, Pirates of the Caribbean series, where we're flying the caravan around um, the Caribbean. However, this Friday is going to be something special. We are staying at St. Martin, and we're going to do a couple landing challenges. We're going to fly down to Saba. And we're going to fly over to St. Barks and see how we all do. So hope you'll join us for that one. And uh, we can give that a kick at uh, doing that. So thank you again for joining us. We will we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.